Hello guys, this is Pranav and today I'm going to take the lesson some means uh, to cover up the syllabus that you might you might have missed during this gen efforts. So we're going to start with means. Amins, it's it refers to a group of n uh, directly attached to one of these one of an alkyl chain or an alkyl chain. So Nit this is nitrogen right we know nitrogen nitrogen is extremely important as it is one of the essential elements and it makes up 70% of the atmosphere as we know and moreover uh, nitrogen is also a, a major component of proteins enzymes which are proteins and hormones which are also proteins and then DNA is also actually made up of N which is nitrogen so DNA is, has many constituents ASTGC you will learn about it the structures of it them later in biomolecules but you will also realize that DNA is each of the parts of DNA are majorly constituted by nitrogen so it's an extremely important compound and amines play a huge role in, even in all the biomolecules and in polymers as well which you are also going to learn in the future chapters so coming to the classification of amines uh, amines are classified into three types primary primary secondary and tertiary so it's uh, like we'll start off with ammonia ammonia is just three hydrogens while two one lone pair is there so this angle is 109.5 degrees but as we come down this series the angle decreases because the group becomes bulky and the angle decreases because the repulsions between these between the groups decrease and uh, compared to the repulsions between lone pair and bond pair so so it decreases to 108 degrees by we reach here here it will be n r r r lone pair where r refers to an alkyl group similarly this will be 1 h and 2 r's while here it's only one R and two H's. Okay, so this is how they are classified when one R is added and one H is removed. So we generally represent this like this R and H2, R and H, R dash, and similarly R and R dash, R double dash. So this is how they are classified. Now coming to the nomenclature, I'll just go through the examples, many examples, which which will be easier. So let's come here. This is an ethane to which an, a, this is a primary amine and it's ethanamine. It's called ethanamine because this is an ethane may, uh, backbone to which amine is added. So this is ethanamine. And we coming back to this, this is to represent the position of this one, two, so propane 2 amine the e at the end of the propane is removed now the, the nomenclature of secondary is as follows you write the smaller one as n and the name of the alkyl group separately methyl and then you write the en entire backbone of it which is ethanamine again and similarly to coming to say a tertiary nomenclature this is this is how it goes you see, you give two double n's and methyl methyl which is dimethyl and you give the backbone of it which is methanamine we'll have a look at more examples look at this this is two ethyls and a huge butane butane chain so this would be butanamine and this would be diethyl so you have to say n and diethyl butanamine as here suppose if this was methane it would be n n methyl ethyl butane one amine so all of these are similar well look at this this is double amine so it's called diamine and the, both the positions are represented here one and six so similarly this one amine is has much more preference compared to the double bond so the numbering starts from the amine itself one two three and hence their name so on propane prop two in double bond one amine so this is called aniline or benzamine because benzene and an amine substituted on it this is as we all know this is two lean and 
uh, the numbering starts from here so this this gets the number 2 this is called hence this is called 2 amino toluene and similarly all these para bromoalanil and so on this is 4 bromoalanil because bromine has much more preference compared to nh2 methane as a functional group so the numbering starts from here 1 2 3 4 so 4 bromoalanil amine and this is as a tertiary amine with a aryl group so hence it's called nn dimethyl benzenamine now coming to preparations of these reduction of nitro compounds it's one of the main uh, just like the reductions we learned in we learned for e, uh, alkenes where alkenes are reduced from r double bond r form to r h r h using hydrogen using the process hydrogenation using palladium or platinum or nickel as a catalyst so this is used in a similar way no2 is also reduced to nh2 while no2 is a nit nitro group this aryl can be substituted by any other alkyl group as well and so on so coming back another method would be using a transition metal and hydrochloric acid but here iron is much more pre preferred because this reaction gives out fes FeCl2 and further HCl so the HCl is always reused and continuously used and it produces itself so only a little amount is uh, necessary to initiate the reaction so we're gonna start with ammonalysis how are you pronounce it yours this thing of alkyl highlights <coughs> so what happens is the Rx bond this is an alkyl halide and the bond breaks down but before it breaks down it forms a what do you call ionic bond with these it, it forms an ammonium salt first where NH2 substitutes it gives out it electrons to R and the bond skips to X so this becomes a minus and this becomes NH2 plus NH3 plus and this forms a bond because a coordinate bond so and NH3 gets plus the H the H takes a plus and the plus in X minus form out HX. So you end up with R NH2 and H. So the if this was the plus, this was this will be transferred in and H will carry out the plus and this will take minus, both will combine and HX, you will get HX and R and H. So similarly, this can be continuously carried out by adding more Rx and you'll end up with R2 and H and Rx again, R3 and H. This can be further carried out under some extreme conditions, R4, but the, because nitrogen only has the probability, I mean, yeah, the nitrogen only has, uh, what do you call it? The valency for three so what happens is when this happens it actually donates its lone pair which haven't been used till here so so that the donation of the lone pair gives it a positive charge and this gives in a so r4x minus so this is what happens this is called a quaternary ammonium salt so sorry this is r3n and this is what happens this is called the quaternary ammonium salt and can the free amine can be obtained from the ammonium salt by treatment with a strong base so we can just add a NaOH and this is removed as water and you get the NX minus so you normally get this as product I guess so what happens is uh, the order of reactivity is for each alkyl is this Ri is greater than RBR which is greater than RCL this is because the Ri bond, I being bigger in size and having less dense, less denser electron cloud, I mean much more dispersed electron cloud, this bond is kind of easier to cleave compared to the RCl bond. Therefore, this is more much more reactive with amines. So coming to reduction of nitriles. This group is called the nitrile group, CN group. So what happens is this RCN reacts similar to this, 
similar to this hydrogenation same hydrogenation takes place here hydrogen in the presence of nickel or platinum ca catalyst it it gets converted to rch2 and h2 okay so this this method is especially used to add one carbon then reactant that is i'll show you an example so suppose we have a single um, a methyl amine we convert it to ch3oh ch3cl and ch3cl using kcn as a catalyst we get ch3cn again see here we add an extra carbon atom and using this method we convert it to amine again so we end up with one more carbon in the chain compared to this now coming to amides which are uh, very important compounds which you learn in biomolecules <coughs> this linkage is called by uh, amide linkage and that's the name of the group hence the name of the group amide this is using lithium aluminum hydride and water as catalyst this is converted to rch2 and h2 okay coming to the next one gabriel thalamide synthesis this is used for uh, for formation of uh, primary amines of aryl aryllic nature that means r is of aryl r is an aryl like benzene amine so on aniline all those all those are used this method is usually used so what happens is two amide linkages are here as you can see this is an amide linkage and this is an amide linkage to a single to a single uh, nitrogen so we add koh and h and oh react off and h is replaced by k and this this is used to react with rx as we have already seen before in this monolysis what happens is this is replaced and kx is given out so you get nr but we have to remove this nr from the entire thalamide right so we add naoh what the naoh does is it removes the nr and <coughs> it bonds with these so you end up with r and h2 r r is generally aryl in nature as i already told you before this is used for because it does not undergo a nucleic substitution with the anion the anion formed by the thalamide hence this is much more preferred for aryl aryl halides so the next one is kind of important hoffman bromide degradation reaction it's called degradation because the amide unlike in this case the entire amide group is removed and that that the sense is the amide group is removed in the form of carbonates so what happens is the amide reacts with bromine and uh, sodium hydroxide to give off rnh2 as as before but the co group is completely removed it is removed in the form of co3 so you get na2co3 and nabr which is the br from here and h2o so here if you have noticed the carbon atom is one less than the one you started off with so you get one less minus this is used to reduce the descend the amine chain so the physical properties you can go through them these are kind of uh, the only thing important here is the intermolecular hydrogen bonding that happens in primary amines so here it is primary secondary and tertiary that is primary have more intermolecular bondings because there are more hs in this and tertiary have the least and this gives them the what do you call it? much more higher boiling point so primary are higher boiling point than secondary and secondary have more boiling point than tertiary because because of the hydrogen bonding so you can see the example for yourselves and chemical reactions chemical uh, amines are basic in nature so coming to this amines also behave as nucleophiles in presence of an unshared electron pair because the amine group the nitrogen in the amine group has an has a lone pair on it that's why it acts as a nucleophile to donate the electrons so to substitute the chemical reactions are as follows as i already we have already seen this reaction here the same reaction takes place here and hx this attacks the h and you get a salt ammonium salt 
and this can be the same in the same case for aniline you get anilinium chloride and so on and if you add something oh minus as we have did before na oh minus you end up with the amide uh, amine back again and you get water and the chloride ion and this we have as lewis basis and this is how you get the 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 dash it is the dash it's the basic basicity of this you can go through this i'm not bothered the structure basicity relationship of amines so let's go through this have so what actually happens is have a, as we have already seen the electron is donated to the h plus and this is why the basicity comes into place because it reacts with the acid which is h plus and the h plus the plus of i mean it gets the positive charge because it loses the electrons and so on this is what happens ammonium this is ammonium this is amine let us compare their basicity which one is better uh, ammonia or uh, the amine so due to the electron releasing nature of alkyl group that is this because r group is rich in electrons so it donates electrons to them so the electron density around this kind of increases so it's it's more likely to donate this electron so this is much more basic compared to this so we can say that uh, we can say that decreasing order of extent of edge bonding in water and order of stability of ions of solvation i know i'm sorry we'll come back to this uh wait i'm lost yeah as i have said because of the pushing nature of uh, electron releasing group r present on here this is more likely to give the electrons and this is therefore this is more basic coming to another part the edge bonding nature <coughs> in water is as follows as we have already seen shown here h bonding is more in primary and so hence they are more soluble in water that's kind of obvious i don't have to say this again so this uh i don't have to do this it's the same thing so coming to aryl amines versus ammonia which one is more basic so because of the resonance structure of aniline look at the resonance structures because it is much more stable <coughs> and now coming to the anilinium ion which you get while donating the electrons has only two resonance structures hence it's not as so many stable structures here and lesser number of structures here so the reaction for for it to transform from here to here is unlikely because it's more stable in this state than in this state so the stability decreases hence ammonia is much more basic than aryl amines now alkylation the textbook says you already did it so refer to unit 10 in class 12 and acylation this is where the amide amide comes back into play this is where acyl group this is acyl group c double bond o uh, attached to cl and halide any other halide would do so amine reacts with this and so what happens is the double bond one of the electrons in the double bond shifts here and the electronic the electron pair is given to c and hence cl is released so and one of the h donates its electron from the bond to nitrogen and you get a plus and you end up with this c double bond o this is the amide group as i have already told you before and you get a hcl so what actually happens is <coughs> let's do this r n h h c c l c double bond o c h 3 so so first what happens n because r is r has a pushing nature and c has c has a nature to take electrons n donates the electrons this causes an increase in electron density of carbon which pushes the electrons in the double bond towards oxygen which is already electronegative 
and so is CL. So hence the this is also shifted. So what happens? This gets a positive charge. So but the nitrogen having a positive charge is kind of unstable compared to hydrogen having a positive charge. So this bond is donated to nitrogen again. And so we end up with R. So because this comes out as Cl minus and this comes out as H plus, these two react and we get HCl at the end. R and only one H. There's a link between nitrogen and carbon because coordination can bound because it's donating a lone pair. C double bond O Cl CH3. This has minus. Uh, but this minus this Cl is lost in the form of HCl. So this minus is again jumps back to place because Cl has been lost. So the electronegativity, I mean the electrons have been taken out. So electron density has written to normal. So this happens only in, in case of base. A base must be there to catalyze this. <coughs> so this is what happens. Now coming to this. <coughs> One sec. So carbyl amine reaction. So it's a test for primary amines you will do in the lab because it gives us a nasty smell. Trust me, it's very nasty. Yeah. So what happens is RnH2, the methane, the primary methane reacts with CHCl3 and um, uh, potassium hydroxide and you heat it in a water bath for some time and you get a foul smelling gas which, which is an isocyanide and it has extremely foul smelling gas and this is the test and you get all these reactions so, so this is chloroform don't forget that this is chloroform it reacts with chloroform to give an isocyanide in presence of hydroxide no, 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 I'm sorry. Potassium hydroxide. So, a reaction with nitrous oxide. This is an important one because it gives you the azo. It is responsible for the azo, azoic nature, which we'll learn later. Azo reactions take place due to NaNO2 only. So, primary aliphatic, but this is extremely unstable because in our azo compounds, the Benzene ring is there to stabilize this, but here it's not extremely stable. So what happens is it reacts with H2O and you get ROH. It's used to convert amines to alcohols. As I already told you, aromatic amines, NaNO2 and 2HCl under 0 degrees Celsius, near 0 degrees Celsius. What you get? This is stabilized because of the resonance, as I already told you before. Now, this is called Aros aryl sulfonyl chloride. This is a similar reaction to this. This is similar reaction, same reaction except for C is substituted with S. Okay, and this part, this part is substituted with C, C double bond. So everything remains same except for the CL is, C, HCl is removed and you get the compound. Look at it here. But what does this show? This shows that the nitrogen must have an H attached to it to for this reaction to take place. The hence, uh, tertiary amines cannot undergo this reaction or this reaction. So, this is a main how to test for tertiary, I mean, te testing for primary and secondary amines. Now, coming to electrophilic substitution. Bromination is one of the important ones. So what happens? Aniline reacts with bromine water at room temperature to give a white precipitate. That is, sorry, you can't see the bromine. The bromines are here. Bromine. Okay. So why does this happen? Because look at the structure here. The negative is traveling. Right. So what happens? The bromine takes the position of the negative and that's why you get these HBr. Because the cleavage takes place like this. Bromine, bromine. And it's it's not a homolytic cleavage. 
because of the aniline present so what happens it's it's heterolytic cleavage so what happens br plus attacks attacks the minus here attacks the minus and hence they are formed in the ortho and para positions only while the br minus attacks the h plus from what so this is what happens so the next part is substituting because of this they are extremely reactive so we can't only substitute on one position to make that happen we used pyridine we used pyridine and uh, this compound to sub to get it here so what happens this act as an inhibitor and only ortho position is extremely uh, active because these are inhibited so you end up with this only it attacks at the and you get a major of this this is because of the resonance resonance structure here look at the resonance structure because this is resonance structure without the involvement of the benzene ring so the electron density at these positions at the ortho positions decreases because of this resonance hence p uh, the para position is much more active hence it only takes place here now coming to the nitration part uh nitroxide nitroxide yeah nitroxide and uh, hydro uh, sulfuric acid is used and we get these products both in all the positions but the para position is much more major 51% however we can improve the product again the, the majority of the product to increase the yield of the product we can use the same method as we have done before for the bromination and you get the same product again we have to do it again and you get the nitroaniline as major product sulfonation is same thing but without the nitric acid only hydrosulfuric acid so what happens you get an ammonium hydrosulfate and you take it to 200 degrees celsius this is converted to this okay <coughs> now coming to diazonium salts these are important ones because this is these reactions are formed using na2 and these this is this reaction is called diazotization because these compounds are azo compounds this is a special class of compounds which are extremely important so amine is reacted with nano2 sodium nitrate sodium nitrate and you add it and so you get the azo compound the, and they are extremely stable because of the resonance that takes place here okay so reactions involving displacement of hydrogen uh these are extremely important because these can be used to convert from one compound from amines to other easily other compounds easily so like look at this example by just adding cacl2 or hcl um uh, you get arcl and arbr and arcm you just have to add these that's it so they are extremely reactive depending on the reactant so this is called sandmeyer reaction it is used to produce halides bromides chlorides and nitriles cyanides so another one is gatterman reaction which we don't use we use only copper as the catalyst and hcl and the same hcl you get a, you end up with the same thing but cux comes out as a product cucl in this case so the yield in sandmeyer reaction is found to be better than gatterman reaction and anyway uh, iodide also takes place but we use ki okay so we still get a aryl iodide no fluoride ion we can't use fluoride ion as just like this because it's extremely reactive so we have to use in a semi inhibitor type which is hpf4 and you get a intermediate the intermediate then proceeds out when heated to this 
now replacement by h so the azo compound i mean the azo thing the azonium salt is added to phosphate hydrogen phosphate and water and you get normal compound that is a benzene ring that's it depending on the real if this was benzene there is an imm salt then you would have we would have gotten benzene that's it so this is used to convert back to the alkyl or aryl group completely without any functional groups to its original form so this or we can use uh, ethanol to convert this and you end up in aldehyde now a replacement of hydroxyl group to make it an alcohol or a phenol we use this to make it a phenol actually especially so we just add water and heat it at 283 degrees celsius 283 kelvin which is like 10 degrees that's it and so you get a phenol and nitrogen replacement by no2 here we use the same reaction as hbf same thing as before we use hbf4 and we get n2 bf4 but instead of heating here we add nano2 that we have used to produce the n2cl and we end up with no2 and nabf4 again so this is used for test for this a thing called diacetation because the diazo groups have extremely they are easy to identify because they are colored they are extremely colored like they have bright colors so when you do it in the lab you'll get a red compound and and don't put your hands on it your hands get like extremely difficult to take it off so what actually happens is the diazonium salt is reacted with another aryl group which is generally an amine or a phenol and the h and cl react and they are removed and you end up with the bond these are extremely colorful as i already told you before so that's the end of the lesson thank you bye get lost